today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, comic, graphic novel, whatever you want to call it. Jo whoops. George Sprott. We'll call it a picture novella by the cartoonist Seth. The one named cartoonist Seth is one of my favorites. Uh, it's a really big hardcover book. There's a regular comic, just to give you a little sense of scale there. What was this, 12 by 14 or 16? I can't remember. I think it was 12 by 14, that's what about what it looks. But it's a, it's a big one. Uh, a lot of Seth stuff is actually smaller than a regular comic, so it's nice to see this one bigger than a regular comic. I think Seth is also a book designer too, so it's all fan it looks very nice and fancy. There's the spine, George Sprott, 1894-1975, Seth, D and Q, that's drawn in quarterly, and the back is our, the Institute of Polar Studies, Sprott, uh, was Arctos, Secretum Arctos. Uh, this was, uh, George Sprott ran this Institute of Polar Studies, which as far as I can tell was just him. <laughs> but uh, I really, really like this book. It came out in 2009. There's a nice, <coughs> pardon me, end papers. Uh, it came out in 2009. It's hard. I don't think I've read it since then, too. So it's been a long time that I, I just reread this this week, and I've been meaning to reread it all these years, and just somehow haven't. But um, there's George Sprott there in a little... There's some, some buildings with his name on them. Just end paper stuff here. 1894 to 1970. That's when he was born. That's when he died. And a really nice double-page spread of... CK, CK TV. Uh, Seth is um, Canadian, so a lot of his stuff takes place in Canada. And the stars of CK, CK, 1966. Uh, there's George Sprott right there. And these are all, this was a local television station, you know, his fictional local television station in Canada. And Seth's work is very much about nostalgia. He's one of those people who thinks that the world was better in the past, even before he came along. From the collection of Mr. Zero Tree, Mr. O Trade. So, and, and he's very good at creating these, just these, you know, characters who are all on a TV show. And this book is also all about nostalgia. And I'm not a huge nostalgia fan, but I really love, he's like, if, if there was a Mount Rushmore of current cartoonists, he'd be on it, because I, I really like his stuff. You know, a little, little philosophizing here, the intro, uh, and birth. Oh, <laughs> I find this funny. Uh, since, um, they need, you know, they need the information in the UPC on something, they put it on this little, uh, card that wraps around the back cover that gives all the publisher information and stuff, and it says down here, the artist requests that this band be disposed of upon purchase. I suppose he doesn't want it ruining his book design. That's how much of a book designer he is. But I use it as a bookmark, so I, I kept... I didn't put it back on the book, but I, just as I was reading this, I was using it as a bookmark. So, nice... nice once again, we start out with a um, nice uh, full-page shot here and the intro to that. Dedicated to Chester Brown, best cartoonist in friend. Yeah, it's Chester Brown, uh, Joe Matt, and Seth were like the three Canadian indie cartoonists who made it in the late 80s. So they're, they're all friends. I like all their work, generally. Little prologue, October 2nd, 1970. And this is very much like, uh, it reads kind of, at times, like a Sunday comic strip. Because this is just a little... I, and, I, and I really like Seth's drawing. I think he's got such an economy of line, but captures such emotion with just a few lines and colors. And this is just a day in the life near the end of his TV show, because when did he... Uh, eight, 1975, so... Oh, that's right, they go through his... Uh, they go, there's... It's interwoven with stories from different times in his life. And this is, they go through the, his last day. Um, then we flash back to the beginning of his life when um, 
he was a polar, well, he wasn't quite a polar explorer. He was more like a guy who went up to the Arctic and just kind of messed around. It was more like a gentleman adventurer, except he really wasn't a gentleman either. And, and I just I just love his layouts. I love his his writing flows so well for me as do his pictures. I like his storytelling a lot. This is this is a little um, overview of his life on this page. So so they they give us overviews of his life. They give us his last day. They give us um, oh and he also did this. I think he had this is a cardboard. And I think he built a whole town once. Like that's CKCKTV. So he would build cardboard models of the towns he would build. That's how nostalgic he'd get for them, too. Here's a little, you know, they give us a little, this is on the channel itself, CK. Usually you can tell by um, whatever's, whatever picture they got here, whatever cardboard building, they give us a little bit about the, the building and a little bit about the TV right there. So that's all. Oh, and there's, there's all the people who were on TV with him. And this, since the panels are so, since the, the book is so physically large and the panels are so small, there's really a lot more to read in this than your normal comic book, which I, I don't know what it, this is, 80 pages, somewhere around there. But it really reads more like twice that most of the time. And here we just, I'll, here's just a little two page or three page story. Here's where it like kind of breaks from the um, Sunday strip format and we get a comic. And this is just him in... As a child, we get a little glimpse into his childhood and what's going on. And it ends, his idyllic childhood ends with his pa him coming home and his parents fighting. So that, you know, it's really given us little glimpses into his life and what made him. Um, yeah. Here's one of the, and they have interviews too. Once again, this is the Sunday comic. This is one of his... Uh, Sidney Sir Grizzly Gruesome, one of his co-workers at the TV. He was, you know, the guy who introduced the horror movies on the local TV show. So here he is at, I think this is a, a Fantasticon 97, this is. So, so they have interviews from, if not quite 2009, from further in the future. So he's talking all about working with George Sprott and his own life. And when, then we're back to the last day of George Sprott. Nice little art pages of the Arctic here. These usually fit in story-wise with whatever, whatever's going on. So we, uh, there we go, Gentleman Adventurer. Though, like I said, some of the Northern Dispatches was the magazine he ran for boys in like the 30s. So they go through all the various jobs he had. And, it's, and it also very much questions what we leave behind. Because, um... Though May seventh, nineteen sixteen, very early in his oh, he went to the semin he, he he studied in cemetery seminary school, you know, school for priests, but he never became one. And it's like I said, it's very much about what we leave behind too, because George Sprout was a fairly famous man in the story in um, Canada, but at, at some point in this, they say that his television station threw out all the tapes of his shows. So even though he had a show from like 1950 to 1975, a, a local TV talk show, none of it was left. So, you know, what does he leave, what does he have to show for this life of adventuring? Almost nothing. He, little adventure of his in the seminary school, we're back to his last day. Um, Uncle George, he's got a niece who's his only family left. So she kind of, um, t the Institute for Polar Studies, a little bit about, yeah, the Institute is mostly him and his buddies who went up to the Arctic with him. Now we flash back just, just to him living his life in 1927, getting caught in a snowstorm, like little glimpses of his life. The Melody Grill, there's a nice, this is the diner he used to hang out in, in the um, Enjoy Your Hi Hat service in like the 50s when the town was really jumping and everybody at the TV station was famous. There's more, there's people in the TV station in the 50s. Everybody, he used to hold court down at the Hi-Hat Diner. Then they go through the history of what happened to the Hi-Hat Diner. I think that's later on. A dream of his, your viewers, these are all the, these are the daily shows. 
uh, for Thursday, October 9th, 1975, the day George died. So you can see there's, there's his show there. And he used to show silent films on his show too and talk about them because his silent films were from his uh, Arctic exploring days. So really, I mean, it's so nostalgic that even his TV show was about silent films. Uh, he, had a, he had a daughter who he fathered in the Arctic who he never knew, a little word from her. George Sprott being interviewed himself, giving you a little bit of his, a really, really beautiful book. Here we go, 1934, we get a little uh, comic strip of him up in the Arctic playing the same record over and over. A little look, oh, this is, this is his room when he, where he lived, where he died at the, uh, the radio hotel. They'll give us a little history of the radio hotel too. Flashback to a dream he had. Um, a few of his fans remembering him were also really old. Another nice art page. Once again, we flash back to his early days, him getting a telegram that his uh, father has died. And this, this image reoccurs because this was, they say that, see that top hat on the floor? Um, when he was a child, his father, who was very strong, came out and took his top hat off and then threw it to the floor. And that was the beginning of his father's decline. So he's always been kind of sad and obsessed with that image of his, remembering that image of his father's decline. There it is again, the top hat. His father's decline is a big part of his personality. So there's another little, there's just, there's, there's so many interesting little things that, that occur here. Oh, and here is um, a brief history of the Cornet Lecture Hall. Every Thursday, besides being on TV, he used to give live lectures every thir Thursday night at the Cornet Lecture Hall. There it is. Uh, once again, this is all local, you know, small, small city local stuff in Canada. So it's not like he was world famous, but he was famous within his circle. But what did he leave behind? That's the question. Did he leave anything behind? It's again his last night. Here's his lecture every Thursday, which at, in the 50s was well attended. But by the 70s, there was four people showing up. So what do we leave behind? Uh, 1951, here he, he used to have affairs on his wife who died in a car accident and were never sure if she crashed her car on purpose or not. Once again, glimpses into his life. There's his wife as he's showing up after his affair. The Narwhal Press. This was a, I think this was another thing he did. An interview with Daisy Sprott. Two th oh, that's right. That's his niece and she runs the Narwhal Press. A little printing press she's trying to keep going. But, uh, it, or Narwhal Books. That's her little company. And she publishes some of her uncle's old stuff. And so here we are. There's his uh, private office there. But just, like I said, I, I really enjoy this. It, it, it looks beautiful. Little glimpses into his life. Um, like I said, it really go. Oh, and here's, I, I think Seth did this just because he's a book designer and could. He's got a double gatefold of, I think the, these are all, this double gatefold is all about what's going through George Sprott's mind. Uh, and the last moments that he's dying. Cause they go through his, and it's just sort of like, you know how they say your life flashes before your eyes? It's a little of that, but it's more dreamlike. But it's, you know, really well done. More from the man himself. Life is but a dream. There's a nice shot of just the town. You know, the nighttime at the tank. Because we're getting near the end, so his life is almost over. And he was, you know, he was older, so he's old. one of the running themes was in the 70s, he was always falling asleep, you know, working. So, and, you know, he's falling asleep. He's just going through the motions of the day. He's not even sure why. Then there's a, I like this epilogue, too. There's, um, takes place in 2009, and this guy is a George Sprott collector. So, like many collectors we know, he, he finds George interesting, and he likes finding all the old stuff of his life, even if there isn't a lot of it about. So, you know, what we leave behind, we, we leave behind something interesting, at least to the weirdo collectors like us out there. 
and then they give us the end and here's the CKCK TV sign off. This is, you know, the, the t radio station here, the, the TV station he was on, they give us the sign, gives us the sign off for it. And then we get the color bars as it's signed off the air. Like I said, really, really nice. I enjoyed it. Uh, I liked it back in 2009. I liked it even more now when I read it. So um, look it up. Give George Sprott a read.